Los Soldos Power Users, this is Alim Vargat with the preliminary results of the Soldos Power User Challenge number 33. Uh, warning, this video is not going to be pretty. I am recording my analysis as I'm doing it. So if you want to skip forward, to fast forward to the end to see who won, feel free to do that. Uh, thank you very much for those of you who submitted your result. Uh, I have only one person um, that I wasn't able to download uh, his files. I'm hoping that I'm going to get it. So that's why this is a preliminary set of results. Um, what we need you to do, if you guys remember, simply based on the pictures that I posted, uh, we are supposed to recreate a, a vase uh, doing the reverse engineering. And uh, you have a section view through it, right? You have the front view. You have the top view and there are a couple of very important clues in all these views like if you're looking from the top looks like there is a smooth surface on the inside right if you're looking on the outside seems to be uh, not that smooth uh, and probably the most important picture uh, the one that would provide the the best clue on how to do this the easiest way is the bottom picture so probably you notice here you have um, you have a polygon uh, which makes things so much easier, right? So if you're looking at the the shape that we have on the bottom, it's a polygon. And this polygon seems to be swept. So if you pick up any of these points, it's being swept on something that looks like a variable helix. So that should have provided the idea about how to do it the, the easiest way possible. In a way, I'm glad that none of the contestants picked the easy way, chose the easy way. So they they uh, did things that were quite uh, complex, quite interesting. Um, there are many ways to judge this, right? Many criteria. And the main one I'm going to say is the accuracy. So let's jump directly to the files that I received. This is the original vase. We're going to go through the steps on how to build it uh, in a moment. And uh, I put together an assembly containing all the entrants, uh, all the entries that I receive before the cut date. There is one extra file that I received from uh, Michael Fernando after, so we can take a look at that too. Uh, these are the ones that I was able to download. Okay. And uh, notice here, the overall shape seemed to be done pretty nicely. We have uh, this uncoiling uh, aspect of the vase, like you take this thing and kind of stretch it out, uh, works nice. All the contestants were able to do that. Uh, now let's uh, let's see who did it the the best way. And I'm gonna start with uh, the entries from um, chronologically because uh, one of the criteria is who posts the uh, entry first gets uh, a special consideration. So. Starting from here, right at the top, the first one who submitted a model was uh, Stefan. So let's take a look at uh, Stefan's uh, file. I'm just going to hide all the other ones. And uh, let's take a look uh, what we're seeing here. So again, hide. Okay. The gray one is my original file. The yellow one is Stefan's. And I'm going to say this is pretty bang on. Look how how nice this has been done. Even the fact that on the top this is pointy. This is spectacular. I don't care about the fact that I put some fillets here. This is what we wanted to see. Pointy, smooth on the inside, uh, perfect match. The only thing that's a little bit off and allow me to hide my, my vase Actually, not even that. Everything is everything is peach. I, I was under the impression that this was not a flat, but it is. So, uh, great job there. I think this is this is very very close. Now let's take a look at how uh, Stefan did this. So, first of all, great job here preparing the uh, the file. Right, so he started with the axis. He knows there's going to be some revolving going on. Uh, then he added the pictures, so this is a great um, set of skills for any users of uh, 
of SolidWorks. Notice he places he placed the pictures that I that I posted on uh, on the various planes that are uh, relevant to, to us. He also named them. So this is this is excellent. This is perfect. Okay, perfect. Then the next thing he found out that there are certain areas in uh, on this picture that can be used for defining planes. So notice here a reference sketch that if I'm looking from the front is going through the this intersection points on the original part. Very interesting approach. Uh, and then he created the planes based on that sketch, right, at different levels. And the first thing he did was an actual loft. So created, <laughs> he created sketches. And one thing that's interesting, he used the polygon tool, I think. Let me edit the sketch. Let's see if that's true. Is this a polygon? Uh, I think it is. So if I, yeah, he, he identified the fact that this is a polygon. So I'm going to take it back saying that not nobody noticed that. Actually, Stefan noticed that this is a polygon. Great job. Uh, one cool thing about polygons, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's one of the most versatile tools in SOLIDWORKS because you can change the number of uh, uh, sides quite easily and uh, the relations are being preserved. So this is, this is spectacular. Um, nice, uh, nice found there. Uh, very interesting that he chose the loft approach. Okay, so if I'm hiding all these sketches, and uh, that's another thing that I like to do sometimes create kind of selection sets for this to hide and show easily. But I think we can do that also. Uh, no, we cannot do it with a um, with a folder, right? But imagine if he would have had this as a selection set. Uh, so let's put add here. Let's call it uh, ref pictures. Uh, and you want to hide and show them? You simply hide, uh, simply select, right click on the empty space, show. Then again, select all of them, right click on the empty space and click hide. So something to consider for the future. Uh, so he created this as a loft, right? He created all the sketches at various levels based on the picture that I sent. So very, very accurate. Then he identified the fact that this is symmetrical, so it can be mirrored on both sides, right? And uh, there you go. We we were able to create it to create that uncoiling F effect. Uh, and then uh, he split the top section in order to to clean it up. And actually, that's interesting. Let's take a look at what he did here. So did a little bit of of uh, uh, he used the intersect tool for that. So very very interesting to achieve the end result, combined the two, and then he used a revolve cut to make the vase hollow. Uh, Stefan, I'm absolutely thrilled with your solution. Like, I was thinking that everybody's gonna go the sweep way. Uh, you chose the loft, and I see why that makes sense from the reverse engineering point of view. So great job here. Uh, and uh, also, this is extremely, extremely close to the original model. So great job there. Excellent. Uh, let's take a look at uh, the next entry. So the next entry was uh, submitted by a mysterious uh, user called uh, 3DS. Uh, and you can see, again, the shape is pretty close to the original shape of, uh, of the vase. Uh, if I'm hiding my file, you can see that we have uh, polygonal surfaces at the bottom, so we know that. Uh, there is one thing here that um, hasn't been uh, done, which is getting this pointy aspect at the top, right? So if I'm showing again the original file, uh, you probably notice that it kind of finishes in, in pointy um, areas. Uh, let's take a look at how this looks like from the side. So everything seems to match acceptably well. Not as perfect as Stefan's, but, but pretty close. Let's take a look at the model, how this was created. So again, kudos for documenting the feature tree. Uh, great job there. Uh, let's take a look. 
uh, how this was done. So I'm going to press Control T to flatten the feature manager tree. And uh, let's start from, uh, from the beginning. Looks like we have a few sketches that are defining, um, let's see actually what they're defining. So make sure sketches are visible, sorry. Yeah, oh. Uh, so what do we have? We have the pictures inserted in, uh, in SOLIDWORKS, great job there. Uh, and then we actually have the Halex, which matches the shape pretty nice. Um, next, we have a revolve body for the overall shape. Again, matching everything very nice. And then uh, I think this is a, let's see, is this an intersection curve? Oh, no, sorry. Another uh, revolution on the inside and then an extrusion on the outside. Okay, so let's show all the bodies right now. Okay, you guys can see the transition. One thing that I would recommend is making these pictures transparent. So you can make the background, the white background transparent. It's, it's, it's making everybody's life a little bit easier uh, and then ooh, this is so interesting that is so interesting um, there was a split line over there and there is that was in order to create this um, helicoidal surface okay. good let's uh, hide these surface bodies and also hide these sketches just to see just to see what we have so far so the surface that we are working with let's take a look at this is that trimmed helix Okay, so if I'm showing you all these guys, let's pick up these ones. You can see the results. So it's actually starting to look pretty interesting, and I believe it's also the original shape, right? Wow, what an interesting approach. So you are getting the edges first. Uh, and then a couple more surfaces here. And the result, then we have a loft using this as guide curves. And uh, the interesting thing, this is still a surface. A bit of trimming done. And we got, we got an interesting shape, which actually it's a solid body, right? So you can see this is the solid body. Let's hide the surface bodies right now. This is spectacular. So also I'm gonna hide all the sketches and everything. This is unbelievable. Look at that. Uh, what's next? Okay, working on the top. Now, uh, let's get all the solid bodies visible. Started to look as something that we can recognize. Okay. And then kind of doing the top and the bottom, mirroring, deleting some of the faces. I think this is a cut with surface command, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. So he just found a section that can be repeated. Right? Uh, I think uh, we have also another pattern so let's show again this result so it's again about identifying the symmetry you identify where the symmetry is and, and finishing it up so pretty interesting approach very interesting approach uh, i just wished that the the top would be pointy uh, i think that would have helped 
uh, and I'm afraid I might have thrown you in the wrong direction by filleting those um, edges so you, you probably thought that these are chamfers okay so great job here uh, a lot of work for sure so uh, I'm not gonna save it I'm simply gonna reload your, your file okay the next one the next entry came from uh, Michael Fernando. Uh, one thing that uh, I'm going to say in this case is that um, Michael did a, a great job getting the uncoiling effect. Uh, also, if you're looking from one side, uh, you have a pretty good matching. But at the top, uh, for some reasons, I don't know why, this deviates quite a lot from the original shape. Uh, the other thing is, if I, let's open the file and let's take a look at it. Uh, I think the thickness is off. Uh, everything is much, much thicker. Probably would look very nice 3D printed, but uh, this is a little bit off. Uh, one thing that's interesting is that uh, the file uh, feature manager is much, much compact, much more compact than before. All right, so he started with the helix, uh, picking it up from the original uh, file set. Um, got the surface revolve so if i'm looking at this this is what you have so far uh, a surface whip so uh, let's let's show the surface bodies for the time being as right, so you can see how the two surfaces are intersecting which allows us to find the intersection curve between uh, those two surfaces uh, which also allows uh, michael to create the first solid sweep. So if I'm hiding this, you can see he got the first solid sweep. Uh, made it a little bit longer. And that, that in order to allow for intersection between the two of them, running the mirroring, intersect. So he got the point he uh, end this way. Very interesting approach. And then circular pattern. Okay, boss extrude revolve uh, and this one I believe he did it for in order to get the the bottom and pretty much the job is done so great job there um, again a little bit off but uh, very impressed with uh, how small is your feature manager tree how short is your feature manager tree uh, he came I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Also came with an interesting uh, approach here. So look at the pointy uh, ends. Uh, one thing that uh, hasn't been done here is uh, completing the inside cut. So I don't have a smooth cut here. Everything kind of it's polygonal, or not really polygonal, but facet faceted. Uh, let's take a look at the result of how this was done. So this was the shortest uh, feature manager uh, the overall shape was done pretty nicely so started with a revolve and interestingly enough this is a surface body and one thing that's interesting also he kept he kept both the top and the bottom uh, and then a surface a swept surface so so far we are following the surface modeling course <laughs> uh, which allows us all this uh, sweeping if I'm flattening the feature manager, notice it allowed us to find this intersection curve. So that's the next thing that he did here. He found the intersection curve. And from uh, the pictures, he found the beginning and the end of uh, what can be used for a loft. So you can see this loft created, patterned, and also he identified very correctly uh, the fact that this is going to be mirrored. Um, one thing that he didn't have time to do is to complete the bottom, complete the top, uh, complete the inside cut. So um, very, very interesting. If I'm looking at the end result, um, pretty close, a little bit off, but, but pretty close. Uh, I have one more entry, which unfortunately I cannot download other than uh, as a 3DS. This is come, uh, as a, sorry, as a, an XML. Uh, this is coming from uh, Zinep. So uh, let's see if I can uh, insert his file in here as, uh, as an XML.
Yeah, I tried that and unfortunately at this point it doesn't work. So um, I'm not sure, maybe he has it right also. But uh, we'll wait for, uh, for him to upload the Soldor's file. Uh, now let's take a look at how the original vase was created. One thing that is important is the fact that this is a polygon. So let's start again from the beginning. Same thing like all the users started with a shape, the overall shape. Created a helix. It, this is a variable helix. So um, that allows me to work on the uncoiling effect, making it uh, more pronounced or less pronounced by simply adjusting these parameters. Surface swept, swept surface, sorry, based on that helix. And then finding the intersection curve between these two. Once you have the intersection curve, and this is the cool thing, we can simply use the polygon. Let me hide the surface bodies. So I have this octagon at the bottom that is going on that intersection curve, right? So you can see the result. Simply having a polygon kind that kind of spins around as it moves uh, on the path. So easy solution. Uh, mirroring it, again, all the contestants notice that this is mirrored. Uh, and then I combine the two, so now I have one file only. Created a surface for cutting. You might say, why didn't you run directly a cut and not a surface and then surface cut? And again, it's about making sure that uh, the result is as robust as possible. And then I'm got, I got this flat faces here. So the solution was running the delete face with delete and patch option to get the sharps. Okay, everything else after this is just a matter of capping the bottom. Uh, I use planes for that, so I just define a plane and then running intersect to cap the bottom of this face and then just cosmetic uh, fillets. Okay, so based on what I have seen so far, I'm gonna say that Stefan is the winner of uh, Soldos Power User challenge number 33 and he will get the power user certificate i also want to thank all the participants uh very interesting solutions but if we are to pick a winner from uh I, i'm gonna say the accuracy is the main criterion that we can separate uh the solutions and uh, stefan got the closest and also he was the first one with the entry. So uh, congratulations, Stefan. Uh, you, you will get a certificate. Uh, and um, Zeynep, please send me the file. Um, if your solution is better than Stefan, you are also going to get a certificate. Thank you very much. I learned a lot from your solutions. See you at the next Power User Challenge.